Hello and welcome to this week's angling vlog. This week you join me out on the bank and we're in search of rope. Today you do join me on the local reservoir. It's bank holiday weekend and surprisingly there's only one other angler on the bank. As you can see behind me the reservoir is completely full. A few weeks ago I did come on here, the levels were well down. I did get a few roach but it was bitterly cold. So today I'm hoping the water is a bit warmer. So as you can see on screen now, with the extra water going back in, the banks are really muddy and the water's got plenty of colour. That is quite unusual for this venue. It's a sandy bottom and it's normally quite clear. We give a beautiful day, like you can see, blue skies. The sun is just coming up behind the peg. So let's waste no time at all. Let's have a look at the side tray, the setup and how we're going to approach. So while we're still on the bank, we'll take a look at the bait we've got with us today. We've got corn, and we've got plenty of corn with us. We've got about two pints of red maggot. And we've got some of that beautiful Hinders hemp. That's lovely and split. We've got a bit in reserve. And like I said at the start, it'll either be the cold today of standing in the water. Or if it goes well, believe it or not, we might not have enough bait. You really can go through the bait on this place. There's a lot of roach. So turning around on the peg, you can see there the trusty two Dinsmore bank sticks are in the water. And that's what I love about this fishing. It's super simple and it's probably as close to the river fishing as I get in the closed season. Two bank sticks and we'll be stood out there in a minute making a cast. But looking at the area that we've set up in, what you've got here is a sand bank that goes all the way around. You can see there's a gentleman the other side here carp fishing and this sand bank comes right round here, right in front of the peg and then drops off. So what you have is quite shallow water, by shallow I mean waist deep and it'll gradually get deeper and then it drops into about 10, 11 foot normally and that is why I like fishing this area. You know, if you get over that drop off, you get the bites but today hopefully it'll be deep enough that we can draw the fish closer to us. With the reservoir having water in, I nipped up last night and could see the levels were up. I brought my 17 foot rod with me. It's just gonna help with casting as you can see. Nice long rod, it's going to help me cast in if it's a deeper swim. On there, I've got two float stops and I've got one of the Drennan Vizzy Wags and that one is in 3 grams, so I've got plenty of weight to get out over that ledge if we need to. And down there, I've got a 2 pound, 1 ounce hook link and a size 18 hook to begin with. So we're out on the peg, um, we're feeding quite heavy with the maggot and the hemp to begin with and bits of corn. It's a big reservoir and you've got to draw the fish into your area. Can take a while sometimes, other times they're actually just in the swim when you come. <laughs> but sometimes it can take an hour or two to get them in. It'll be a bit of a different vlog today. Um, both batteries are charged. I sat there last night and watched them charge this morning. Trying to turn it on, it will not turn on. The amount of times this thing has let me down is unbelievable so i'll do the best i can with the video today like i say it's harder when you're stood in the water the gopro really does help so it's taken probably about maybe 15 minutes for the first bite but what a lovely backdrop and it is a roach and just been feeding the maggots and the hemp steady so it might be a short vlog today with that gopro packing in but as always we'll do our best well, it's a nice little start to the video. You can see how washed out it is. But like Mr. Days, where there's one, there's normally more. So sometimes on the channel, you see me go straight in and get a bite. And them days are really good. But days can be different. And today most definitely is a day that's a bit slower. You know, I expected to go back in and maybe get another bite really quickly. But... It hasn't materialised, it's been probably another 10 minutes without a bite. So when they do arrive, I believe on here they go round in a big shoal and you've just got to make that shoal aware that there's food going in. You know, they could be anywhere in this reservoir, these roach. And sometimes it just takes a bit of time for them to find you. So the swim does gradually go away from me here and I've just come on top of the shelf and I knew it was over depth because that float just rises a little bit in the water and it rolls just a tiny little bit more and showing the bit of the yellow on the float 
That's a great sign that getting one on top of the shelf is a really good sign. And that is a bit of a better roach, that one. And if we can get an average stamp like that, we'll have a very good day. I guess confidence and experience go hand in hand. And when I was stood here not getting a bite, I wasn't worried. Because in the past, I know it's just taken a bit longer. But that was well worth a little bit of an extra weight, that. A beautiful bar of silver. When that confidence is high in your weight, the very next cast, we're into another of these beautiful roach. So after waiting about 45 minutes for one bite, we've had the best part of over a pound in two roach. And that's a stunning roach, that. How could you not be happy with that? So one thing that is key during that period is I've kept on feeding, been really positive with the maggots and the hemp, been putting in probably that much hemp each time. Like with a catapult, you do naturally feed more, but the point being, I've kept putting the bait in. Like I say, you've got to let these fish know that there's food going in. That you doing fine cause you got me I don't wanna break your little bubble But you gotta wake up to reality Cause I can see in your eyes Your head is full of dreams Tears are a proof of failure You just gotta let them flow without judge There's so many ways to be happy so as you've just seen in that last piece, been really positive with the feeding and getting the results now. And you can see the difference from the start where one bite in 45 minutes, the show's definitely out there now. And yeah, beautiful roach. One thing though I am going to do is I'm going to move over now to a bigger hook and stronger line. There's colour in the water, the fish are there and I want to start using them bigger baits. So I'm just going to go over to four pound line and a size 16 hook and that'll allow me to use corn and double maggot that you can see on screen now and target hopefully those bigger roads so constantly keeping that bait going in being really positive with me feeding and the first bite on that bigger hook link and the color in the water is definitely going to help today if it was gin clear I would obviously be reluctant to go up to four pound line the beautiful roach that and the beauty about being in the water you can just bring the roach to hand. And when they're of that quality, how can you not be happy just stood here catching these roach? And the beauty of it, it's so simple. A bit of bait, two bank sticks and a rod. And we've got the whole reservoir now to ourselves. And this is one of my favourite places to come and fish, most definitely, because, as you've seen today, that is considered a small stamp. Now, on most pools, if you were getting them all day, you'd be happy. Feeding heavy approach and that bait going through the water, I think works really well on here, because there are so many carp lads on, and they're feeding by a spawn most of the time. Big beds of bait, and these roach are used to coming across you know, really big beds of bait and that bait coming through the water. I imagine when they're spotting on here, these roach are just all over it. And you can see here now, another quality roach just coming on top of the shelf. How can you not be enjoying your fishing when the quality is this good? A plump roach from a reservoir. Feeding wise, with the baits that I'm using, I'm putting the maggots over an area so it goes over the shelf and further out. But my heavier baits, like the corn and the hemp, I'm making sure lands on top of the shelf. And that gives me a base then to target the fish. I can try and catch them on the drop over the shelf. But I've got plenty of bait on the bottom on top of it. Um, the bites that I'm getting, the quality, is all coming on top of the shelf. And one thing's for sure, if it continues like this, we'll have a very nice net at the end because there hasn't been too many smaller roach. They've all been of a good stamp. And that feeling when you strike and you're met with that solid resistance of a roach takes some beating. And then 
every so often you strike and it's a better one. So this reservoir is what I have fished for around about eight or nine years now. And in that time, the roach have always been good. And I've never really seen that many cormorants on here, maybe one or two. There's no pike in here and it is really rare to get a fish with damage on it. And one thing about reservoirs, they very rarely stay the same all day. When we first come on, the wind was off me back. Then it was going that way. And now it's completely turned and it's going that way. And you very rarely get the same conditions all day. And there are a couple of carp in here. So leave in the comments down below if you want me to come up here and do some carp fishing and we'll give it a go. You know, we'll chuck some boilies in and see how we do. But yeah. If that's something you want to see on the channel, go like Reservoir Diary series, let me know and we'll nip up here and give it a go. And we're about an hour or two on now and the bites are keeping on coming and the quality with them. And that one, absolutely fin perfect. And with the average size of the roach, you can see why you get through so much bait. There's plenty of fish out there now and I should have been home about half an hour ago, but it's so hard to leave especially when you're getting roach like that. It really is. And right at the very end of the session, we've got these roach and all these proper roach right on top of that shelf. We're probably two rod lengths out now. We draw that shoal right in. I just work in that shoal and feeding that top of that shelf over that area. We managed to keep the bites coming most of the session. And at the end, we're reaping the rewards now. And there's been plenty of quality in the net today so towards the end of the session continue to get plenty of bites on top of that shelf catching plenty of those quality roach as you can see on screen a good day's fishing on the waggler on the reservoir so i really do hope you have enjoyed this week's video apologies about the gopro and hopefully the video has come out well in the end all that remains is for me to wish you all tight lines in your own fishing and i'll catch you all next week tight lines <laughs>